before dawn, Tuesday, June 6th, the word is given, advance. The forces of liberation move to their rendezvous with destiny. The invasion is on. George Couture was on Juno Beach that day with the Royal Winnipeg Rifles. I was in such a shock, I don't remember too much. It was like, uh, like a zombie moving along. He's at Juno Beach Academy to prepare students for their coming trip to France. Two dozen members of the first graduating class are going to Normandy and Vimy Ridge. So you can read about it, you can watch the movies, but when you're actually there and you're involved with it, it has a different ending for you. Uh, a lot of our guys had these phosphorus grenades hanging on their belts. And when they got off the, the big landing craft some of them were in, the Germans were shooting right into the uh, boat. And they had to step out in three, four, five feet, sometimes deeper water. And they'd get killed there and lay in the water or wounded. And these darn phosphorus things and the bodies were burning in the water. You couldn't stop to uh, help them or... Pull them out. That is the worst thing I've seen. Gavin Mills has a passion for military history, and like Principal Lee Villager, he's an Army reservist. But he's not sure how students will react when they visit battlefields overseas. I can't even fathom um, how they'll react to it. I have my assumptions, but they're often proven wrong with the things that I do in class. And maybe 20 years from now, maybe 10 years from now, maybe five years from now, these kids will get it. They'll go, oh man. I understand now what Mr. Mills was talking about. This afternoon assembly makes it pretty clear that Juno Beach Academy is not like other public schools. It specializes in Canadian studies and has ties to the Canadian cadet movement. In fact, three quarters of the students here are themselves cadets or reservists. Juno Beach Academy, stand at eight. Sit. <laughs> Today, to prepare grade 12s for their coming trip to Vimy, Liberal Senator Lorna Milne tells students about her recent experiences there. Too many of these tombstones said, an unknown young soldier, here I go choking up and I wasn't going to. The memorial to Canada's involvement in the First World War was refurbished and rededicated in April, the 90th anniversary of the battle. After the official ceremony, Senator Milne says she saw something extraordinary happen. Veterans, the kids, the whole Canadian crowd just swarmed over that monument and took control of it. So they were hugging, kissing, laughing, singing, shouting, waving flags, taking pictures, pictures flashing everywhere. Some of them were just standing quietly and looking out. The Dewey plane below which the soldiers must have seen when they came to that top of that ridge on that day. Mitch Raines is one of the few students with a family connection to the battle. His great-great-grandfather won the Victoria Cross there. His name is uh, John George Patterson, and uh, he jumped into a, I think it was a pillbox or something, something like that in the ground and killed a bunch of Germans and saved his whole entire platoon. He hopes that he'll feel something when he gets the chance to visit his great-great-grandfather's grave. I have a reaction going to this place, like, I would just feel terrible about myself and my family, you know? What does that say about you if you don't have a reaction? I have no feelings. I'm not emotional. But <laughs> Yes, straight ahead through the trees, you'll get your first view of the memorial. As soon as they get off the bus, students make final preparations for the ceremony they'll perform at the memorial. Even from a distance, their first impressions are powerful. Uh, I was shocked. Like I, I, I didn't even think it was that big. I thought it was a lot smaller. The barrage that took place before the ceremony, a final lesson from Mills, about the day the four divisions of the Canadian Corps first fought together as one and captured this ridge in April 1917, succeeding where other nations' armies had failed. We uh, mined, okay? we dug under the ground, we rehearsed, okay? we knew our mission, everything was done. 
It was practiced and practiced. It wasn't just, okay, let's take Vimy Ridge, go Canada. It was a four month operation. Great 12s! Halt! Great 12s left! Turn! Elbow dressing right! We are truly honored, thankful, yet so humble at this magnificent part of Canada located here in France. As Canadians, we feel at home at Vimy and are most welcomed in this foreign land. Lord God, thank you for this opportunity. Mr. Schumann, yep. there's no way I'll be able to do this. When it's Gavin Mills' turn to read from Jane Urquhart's novel Own Carvers about the people who created the memorial, he can't. Visible from a distance of 40 miles, the two massive irregular pylons stretching toward the sky like white bone needles. At the end of the service, students and parents line up to place tiny mementos on the steps of the massive limestone memorial. You could actually just picture it, like actually being here at the time that they were at war and just look around, like you know where we first came in and like all the bad guy or all the Germans were over there and you could just picture what they went through and it's, it's sad, it really is. Really, really sad. It's hard to believe that such a brutal war that we lost 60,000 soldiers could land up in such a gorgeous scenery. The hour remaining, students are largely silent. Some use their time to contemplate the thousands of names inscribed here. These men who died here were brothers, uncles, cousins, friends. When I was coming up here, I saw the ridge. It was nothing new, but when I came up here and I saw what's behind you. I was amazed that we were able to take something like this and just seeing this beautiful landscape thinking about what it looked like back in the war. Just, just no words could describe, describe it. I'm very honored to call myself a Canadian. The school has been planning this trip ever since it opened four years ago. All too soon for some, it's time to go. I think they got it a little today. Um. I did. That's why I like to teach. Because <laughs> I think I learn more than they do sometimes, but maybe one day they'll think, Mr. Mills, and that was a pretty cool trip. And he wasn't afraid to show a little emotion to us. Because he never does it at school. After Vimy, students go to the nearby Chaudière Military Cemetery. Which Rains can finally visit his great-great-grandfather's grave. In face of heavy fire, he hurled bombs, killing and wounding some of the crew, then rushed forward, overcoming and bayoneting the surviving five gunners. His valor inevitably and undoubtedly saved the situation and made possible the further advance to the objective. Patterson, Calgary, 50th Battalion, VC. Mitch Rain's classmate Scott Tate remains beside him. He's an Army reservist in the regiment that's descended from Private Patterson's 50th Battalion. Think about what he was feeling what his mind was, what he was thinking about, like if he was thinking about his family or you know how he was going to do it or if he just went in there and just did it. You know what I mean? Like just wind up alive or if he'd wind up dying in the middle of it or if he'd come out and save lives. Uncontrollably, he's a hero in my eyes. I don't know if you should be filming that. <laughs> <laughs>